Hello, welcome to Topper Machine, I'm Josh Topper. So a while back I did a video on servicing my portable air compressor to do an air test on a locomotive that a customer of mine bought. Um, I service several uh, museums, short lines, and things like that. Um, so when this locomotive came up for auction, I reached out to the one customer I thought would be a good fit for it and said, hey, check this out. And um, you know, my recommendation is if it goes for less than such and such price, buy it because without me even seeing it, um, what I'm seeing right, right away in the pictures online were incredible. So I gave him a set dollar amount to max out at and he called me up about a month later, he was gonna go inspect it and he says, well, I never made it to inspect it, but now we gotta go prep it for movement. He bought it and he got it for a lot less than I recommended. When I got there to do the initial air brake work, which that'll be the next footage coming up here, um, and I was kind of rushed because we had a long day and a lot of work to do. Um, just going through the locomotive, that thing was worth way more than I estimated. Um, had I gone and looked at it in person, it should have sold for way more. Um, but luckily, we got it, he got it really cheap and, and it worked out really well. Um, so we got our first work done on it. We went down, serviced it, which you'll see next. And then when we came back, we had to wait for the Wisconsin Southern to inspect it and they inspected it and we had missed a few things, not a big deal. So we'll be heading back down again to service it, um, the rest of the stuff that the inspector found and hopefully it'll be prepped for movement. So without no further ado, here is the first trip down there. Um, again, it's kind of rushed, I apologize, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, so we just arrived out here at the locomotive. This is an EMD GP7. Um, that went through an upgrade pro uh, process in the early 80s. Um, so it now has a 645C block and the electrical of a Jeep 38. So really a nice unit. Uh, we are gonna be servicing the traction motor bearings, the sus uh, traction motor suspension bearings, the wheel bearings, the brake shoes, the brake rigging, and just inspecting for anything that's out of the ordinary. Uh, changing out all the brake equipment up under the floor here and in the cab. And this thing's actually in really great condition. Um, inspecting couplers, taking off the MU air hoses on the end here, the three on each side. And we'll climb up on the horse here and be disconnecting batteries, which are under the floor on each side here. And then in the cab, we change out the automatic brake valve, the independent valve somebody already took off, and we have the, the replacement for that. The MU2A valve right down here. Um, and let me pop open electrical locker and show you. The reason I believe this is a upgraded to an SD or a Jeep 38 is what I'm seeing in the electrical cabinet. Some of the electronic or electrics in here is pretty, uh, pretty similar to the Jeep 35s, 38s that we have that I work on. Um, so it's a pretty nice unit. Actually really clean, um, clean electrically, but mechanically this thing's filthy. So we'll go out on the, on the running boards and take a quick look at the engine. So it's kind of dark in here, but this is the governor end of the engine and I just wanted to take a peek at the governor while I'm here to figure out which, which what horsepower this thing is. And I am not, oh, there it is, 835. So this would be 1800 horse with six, 645 power assemblies. Now, I said this thing was filthy. It's been in mill service for at least 10 years, and it's just disgusting. I've never seen an engine room this dirty. So, this is a good candidate for uh, for Mike Rowe with Dirty Jobs to come give her a cleanup. And 
it's going to take some elbow grease to get this thing clean. But uh, that's part of our putting it back into service is getting it clean. Got to have clean up in the V where the exhaust comes out. So it's a pretty big job. All right, so what we're going to do is start this thing up and make sure there's no water in the stacks because I do need to blow it out and then uh, cap the stacks for movement. And what we're doing here is opening up all the cylinder cocks to blow it out. And there's 16 cylinders, so 16 cocks. So now I'm over on the fireman's side of the engine and this thing is just absolutely filthy. So I mean, she definitely needs some cleanup. I'll go ahead and open up these cylinder cocks. And if it seems like I'm a little rushed here, we are pressed for time. Um, I got down here a little late and so we're going to go ahead and get this thing running, blown out, and then get to work. And then I'll film some of the air tests to show the compressor in operation. So I'm just going to bump the start switch and we'll look for water coming out those cylinder cocks. And it looks good. We'll go ahead and close them up and start her up. All right, so we'll go ahead and prime her up. And over on the other side there are a couple of sight glasses. Kind of hard to see on the other side of the governor. And yeah, hard to see. And hard to do this one-handed. But I can see I got fuel in the glass, so we'll go ahead and crank her up. filthy, miserable, nasty job. So uh, I'll get the uh, air test at the end. All right, so we get the compressor running, charging the air. Yeah, she's building up good. We got our airlines done, ran to our single car tester. New brake shoes, all the traction motor suspension bearings are serviced. Gear cases are all serviced. It's kind of hard to see in there. But on the far side there, there's a gear case. That's uh, got heavy crater grease in it. And then there's a little, behind those cables there, there's a box that's got uh, oil and a friction bearing in it. Those are serviced. Um, brand new brake shoes. all the way around. Wheel bearings are all serviced, um, fresh oil in them. All the pistons have been adjusted to the same piston travel. And we're at pressure. Uh, all the air brake equipment up under this door has been replaced with uh, the three, standard three year upgrade. Um, this filter has been changed. climb up here. We cleaned the cab, which if you remember earlier was just a filthy disaster area. And to prep a locomotive for movement, we disconnected the batteries and pull the, st pull the start fuse. That's another one, um, just so nobody tries. And new brake equipment up top. Uh, the, auto, the train brake is cut out, the independent re 
handle removed and the automatic handle removed. And then the, cap, the stacks have been capped. And I can't remember what else we did. We removed the MU hoses from the end of the locomotive. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, put air to it and bring the bra uh, brake pipe up to pressure. Okay, so now we got our compressor hooked up, we got our charging, um, we got our brake pipe at 90 psi, and that's about where our main reservoir should be, is the 25 to 30 range. And now we'll go out and uh, we'll take an applique reduction on the brake pipe. We should see the red needle come up and the pistons come out. Okay, so I'll let this charge just a few seconds longer and run the compressor, check for leakage, and we are up to 30 psi on the main res which is good I'll go take an application okay, our last air test I saw some excessive leakage and I found out what was going on um, and corrected that we had a bad a leaking check valve between the number one and number two air reservoirs so I've corrected that and I will try another set and release and see how it does I'm still getting quite a bit of leakage. So I must not have a full charge yet. So we'll let it charge. Charge a while. It, it can take up to a half hour or more to charge these completely. So we'll let her charge. Okay, so we let it charge a while longer. And we'll try another 20 pound reduction. holding good on pressure. Piston came out, brake shoes up against the wheel. Perfect. We'll go ahead and do a release. And a good release. So we've had a good air test, minimal leakage. Uh, we had actually less than two pounds of leakage and five is allowable. Um, so we're good there. Uh, this locomotive is prepped, ready to go out. Um, be picked up by, well, inspected by the Canadian National and then picked up by uh, Wisconsin Southern and then delivered to the CN and then us. So one more thing I gotta do before we head out is I have to put some do not start tags on the locomotive. So I gotta fill these out and and put them on the isolation switch up here and the engine start switch back in the engine room. So I rushed the video a little bit in the beginning. Um, we're just so pressed for time. We've been down here 10 hours at this point and finally got to all the work done. There's a lot of work to do to prep a locomotive that's been in captive service like this. Um, I put these non-complying locomotive tags on not because this is a non-complying locomotive. This is a fully functioning serviceable locomotive at this point, but it is not a serviceable locomotive for the railroad that's gonna pick it up or the railroad who's gonna be delivering it. It's a serviceable locomotive for the railroad I am servicing it for, which is the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad out of Trigo, Wisconsin. Now, this locomotive now has a current blue card, a complete 1104 day inspection, which includes changing out all the air brake equipment um, and, and air testing, um, traction motors have been serviced, the tra uh, gear cases, the wheel bearings, the couplers, the air lines, everything. Everything's been gone through. 
we cap the stacks. Uh, so this locomotive is prepped as a box car now. It uh, will function as a box car dead in tow and can be delivered to us where I will put it back into service. Um, and Micro, if you're watching, we really need you out here. This thing is filthy. You, you really should be out for, for the cleanup on this thing. It'd be a great show for you. Um, and I think it'd be your first railroad show also. So with that, my compressor did a great job. So again, I apologize, that was pretty rushed. Um, we, we were really pressed for time that day. It was a long drive down there, a long drive back, and uh, we, were, we were on like an 18 or 20 hour day by the time we were done um, and back home. So we got back and now that air brake test I showed on there was, it, I didn't show a true full air brake test. I showed a quick rendition of it. We did do several full actual documented air brake tests that were all good. Um, but we got back and the mechanical inspection um, report from uh, the Wisconsin Southern, which is owned by Watco. Uh, let's see, they found some brake shoe overhang, which without doing an air test, that's almost impossible. And I know they didn't do an air test on it that day, but that's fine, we'll go back down and look at it. Um, I might put some some brake shims in it. Um, front coupler height is low. That's not a big deal. We'll shim it. Um, and the front pilot uh, measures between six and a six and a half inches. It needs to be six inch maximum. Uh, I believe it's four and a half minimum. So not a big deal there either. We'll add an extension onto it. And they did not do a dead in tow air test. So again, how can they really know what the air brakes, the brake shoes were doing? But that's fine, we'll go back, we'll double check everything, add some shims. So with that, let's go back in the back shop. I brought my portable welder in because I'm gonna have a bunch of welding here. And uh, let's get that thing running. And then I will take the GoPro camera with me back down to the locomotive and we'll just use that camera to finish out the video. So this is my portable welder. This is a P&H bug. And it is a 200 amp DC welder. And the really cool thing about this machine is it was bought new by the Milwaukee Road. Um, and the open current voltage on this machine is 72 volts, which is a charging and starting and um, voltage for locomotives. So they were using it to jumpstart locomotives. It's a model WNP200 and it uses a um, Onan CCK, is it a CCK? No, it is just a CCK. Let me get in there with the camera, get it focused so you guys can see. It isn't an A or a B, it's, a, it's something else, but um, it runs like a top. This thing is awesome. And I've got it set up with just long jumper cables so I can put it in the back of the truck and, and just uh, hook it up to the truck. And I use a boat fuel tank. So this thing, I absolutely love this welder. It's been a great machine over the years. And if anybody happens to know of another one, I would, I would be very interested um, if it's within, a, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, I'd be very interested in it. Um, along with another air compressor like my, my General Supply G, GC260 or GS260. So let's get this thing up and running and uh, do some test welds, make sure she's good to go. So I'll go ahead and hook the battery up to the forklift here. And it really doesn't take that much juice to start this thing. It'll probably take a little bit to get it running. It's been sitting a while. Now that's some good oil pressure.
two test welds here, both at 160 amps with 7018 eighth inch rod. This was my first weld, and that's my second weld. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, now I'll uh, go out and test the welder and ensure that the um, w electrical 120 volt output works because I'll be using electric tools there where there's no power. So let's go make sure that runs. So the welder's ready to go, everything's ready. I got material coming with, tools, everything I need. Um, got the inspection report. So we'll head down there Monday morning and get the rest of this work done. And I'm just gonna bring the GoPro because it's just so much easier. And uh, we'll see how much we get done and if we get it all done and see what the inspection brings. Just arrived back here at the locomotive, and uh, first thing I had to do is cut off the plow on this side. It's got to come off this piece extension here, and then I got to weld new pieces both ends or both sides to make my distance to the rail. Um, I'll look at the brake rigging, make sure that's all right if the inspector. Obviously, I didn't look at it under air, but everything looks good to me. Um, we're going to take photos and document everything and send it to um, the inspector to prove that we took care of it. Yeah, these all look good. I see no shoe overhang. And then on the buckler end, I already got the shim shoved in there. I just need to weld it in to hold that, hold that coupler at the proper height. So, we'll get started here. So now we're moving down to the front end of the locomotive to do that coupler. I already got the shim in there. We'll just weld that in place. We're right at our height we need. So they're all good to go um, to a different style that uh, the inspector will like better. They, they hold, sit better on the wheel. 
Um, so pretty simple, pretty fast, and uh, that takes care of that. Well guys, here we are March 30th, 2023, and the 701 has finally arrived at its destination of Trigo, Wisconsin. No thanks to Watco. Um, that was the railroad it was pretty much trapped by. Just climb up here and I'll kind of fill you in on the whole story of its uh, move that did not go as planned. But she came in one piece, that's a good thing. So we bought this, this locomotive roughly back in March of 2022. We went down for the first time, did all the work on it. 5-16-22 was when I put my out of service tag on. It is March 30th, 2023 and it is finally here. Um, what a disaster. Now, I've had to reshoot this whole ending here multiple times because I just start going off and just get angrier and angrier over the dealings we had with the Wisconsin Southern which is a Watco owned railroad, but honestly, these guys are the most incompetent people I have ever worked with. In 25 years of doing railroad stuff, I have never dealt with a bigger group of morons. Um, if you're a Watco customer, I feel so sorry for you. I mean, just, I absolutely feel sorry for you. Um, if you can move your business anywhere else, I would do it. It's just, ah, God, they were horrible. Um, the first inspector, I swear, never even got out of the truck um, and gave us a list of stuff. And then when he got, went back, he didn't even get out of the truck and just wrote other stuff up. And it's just, we started taking pictures and measurements of everything that they were claiming when we would get there and disprove it every time. I mean, it was just awful. Um, and then when they finally moved it over to their, their yard, their transfer yard over to the Canadian National, then it was another disaster trying to figure out their billing system. They didn't understand how to bill for this um, because we're not in their system. And it's like, we'll give you a check, pay by credit card, whatever. This is a one-time move. You'll never deal with us again, guaranteed. Um, so just a bad situation all around. Um, then CN came and inspected it. And you would think after four or five times that we dealt with the Watco inspectors that the CN inspector wouldn't find anything. He found a couple things, nothing major, just, I mean, simple stuff. We took care of it, and within days, the locomotive was en route to its destination. That easy, dealing with the Canadian National, those guys are great. Um, they've got some very competent and, and good inspectors there, and their, their staff is great. I, I have nothing to complain about with the CN, um, but that, Watco, good grief. I mean, that was the worst experience of my career. Um, so... I'm, I'm done. I'm no more complaining about that. I'm just glad it's here. It's in one piece. <laughs> they didn't destroy it getting it to the Canadian National, so that, that makes me feel better. Now I got uh, a water pump. You probably heard in the beginning of the video that was a little grumbly. Um, they informed me of a bad radiator after we got down there. So got a radiator to replace or repair. Big deal. Um, and then just clean up. Um, all in all, it's in very good condition for its age, and it's going to be a very good, um, useful piece of power here. So, with that, I'm going to end here. I'm done complaining about Watco. And, uh, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.